triaxial testing take out the sample from the field which is a triaxial sample these are mostly cylindrical samples so you insert a barrel into the ground and then take out a cylindrical sample mount it on a or a stone and I hope you can realize why this is being mounted on the porous stone because I want to control the drainage conditions. If I want to do both side drainage then I have to keep a porous stone at the top also. This thing is sandwiched in between a loading plate and at the base this sample is mounted on a pedestal. And pedestal is connected to a sort of a system in which I can provide drains so this is a drainage facility I can connect it with a valve Before the testing is done, we try to cut off this sample or isolate this sample from the cell water and hence what is done is we take a thin rubber membrane and this thin rubber membrane is installed on the sample. Now because I am doing a triaxial testing and I hope you understand what we do is on this base plate. we mount a cell. So, this is how the cell looks like. So, this becomes a cell. On the top of this there is a drainage wall. And there is a arrangement by which I can keep a circular ball over here so that it transmits the load and I can connect the whole thing to a plunger. And this plunger is leak proof, so no leakage will occur. This plunger is normally connected to a proving ring. And this proving ring is suppose if I draw it as a circle, this is connected to a load frame. So, this is the load frame. This whole system sits on a device which is motor controlled and it can be moved up and down at a constant rate of shear. So, this becomes a constant strain test because you are straining the sample. Before we start doing all these things, what we do is, there is another drainage system which is inbuilt in it. Look at the position, what I have done is, 
I have taken it to the cell and this is also connected to a wall. Through this we will apply water which is used to apply sigma 3 confining stress. All right. Fill up the entire space with water and then this drainage valve helps you in filling the cell because until you open this wall water cannot go inside. So what we have done is this is a cell of high capacity of pressure it can bear uh, very high pressures to accommodate sigma 3. Sometimes sigma 3 is also replaced as sigma C which is a better term. So sigma C is the confining stress. So what essentially we are doing is in what way one dimensional three dimensional loadings are different I am incorporating the effect of confinement also on the sample. So what is going to happen the moment you fill up the water in the cell and then you apply the stress I hope you can realize that this is the sigma 3 or sigma c which is acting on the sample, fine. Now what is the purpose of this wall? Under the consolidation process, if I want to see how much consolidation is going to occur because there is a porous stone here, there is a porous stone here, what we do is we interconnect these two. by a system. So this is also a drainage system. Water will come out of this porous stone as well as this porous stone and if I open this wall during the shearing process I know what is the volumetric deformation uh, the sample is undergoing. fine. Sometimes this system is also used for applying back pressures. To saturate the sample. We will discuss about this. Fine. So this is a typical arrangement. Now what I want to do is I want to measure the deformation of the sample when I am shearing it. So I have to put a dial gauge over here and this dial gauge is going to give me the deformation undergone by the sample during testing, okay. Now modern day setups are where I would like to measure the pore water pressure. So this valve itself can be utilized either to apply the back pressure or to measure the pore pressure. Either you can have electronic device or you can connect it to a burette, burette. So this in short is the assembly and what we will do now is we will use this assembly to obtain the situation A, B and C parameters. And as I discussed, uh, we will be talking about three tests that is the CD situation, consolidated drain test We will be talking about CU consolidated undrained test. We will be talking about UU test unconsolidated undrained test. Suppose if I do not fill up any water in the cell, this becomes a typical case of 
UCS when sigma 3 is 0. So, this becomes unconfined compression or compressive strength test. So, this is as far as the drainage has been allowed. Suppose if I do not allow drainage to occur, clear? So, from a simple test assembly, I have created four types of test. Now, mind it carefully, and this is where the complication starts. If I do not allow the power pressures to dissipate, and if I measure the power pressure, what I am going to do is I will be introducing a term known as These are known as consolidated undrained test with pore water pressure measurements. This will become unconsolidated undrained test with pore water pressure measurement. So, that means the series of triaxial testing which is normally done is contains 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 types of tests. A million dollar question is you have the sample, you have conducted the test, how to use the parameters, how to analyze the parameters. We have been talking about the triaxial testing, how the triaxial tests are done and what are the different types of tests which you would like to be done and so the issue which I wanted to uh, highlight was how to analyze the parameters so that we can do the proper designs. So, triaxial testing is sort of a brahmastra for geotechnical engineers. It was invented long long back but till date there is no substitute for triaxial testing and it is a sort of a holistic test which uh, a geotechnical engineer would like to perform on soils of different types and as I emphasized in the last lecture, the basic idea is to create circumstances or the conditions under which you want to determine the material properties. Ultimately, uh, the objective is to obtain the shear strength parameters that is cohesion and frictional, internal friction phi. So, from this point onwards, I will pick it up further and uh, we talked about different tests that is the CD test, a CU test, a UU test, a UCS and if you are very much interested in finding out uh, the influence of pore pressure on the samples, we have introduced this concept of a bar. So, this bar indicates the pore water pressure measurement. So, if you go into the historic development of the triaxial testing and when we were students, we used to use a mercury column to apply the pressures on the system and the measure the pore pressure, but now things have changed. It is the electronic age. You have different types of transducers and the pressure sensors which are being used in the triaxial testing. It has become very advanced testing. So, if you remember uh, in the previous lecture, I introduced this concept of a triaxial a specimen which I might have brought from the field. Typically, the length of the sample is 2 times the r, the radius of the sample. So, this is what is known as a typical triaxial sample. We had mounted it on a porous stone. If I am doing a drain test,
and there was a loading plate on the top of this. We call it as a steel plate which is normally used for distributing the pressure on the system on the sample and this will be having a sort of a arrangement which will be connected to a proving ring. And this is sitting on a pedestal. pedestal before the testing is done we try to cut off this sample or isolate the sample from the cell water and hence what is done is we take a thin rubber membrane and this thin rubber membrane is installed on the sample now there are special devices when you will be doing this test you will know how these membranes are installed. So that the rubber membrane remains fixed and does not get detached what we do is we use o-rings. So this is an o-ring at the base also we use an o-ring. So both at top and bottom you have two o-rings, they have a tendency to clamp the rubber membrane with the sample and then we can apply confining stress or sigma 3. We have included a dial gauge over here to know what is the volumetric deformation or the axial deformation of the sample. So dg is the dial gauge and then the whole system is pushed up at a certain rate of strain. This strain rate is obtained based on your design requirements. Whether you are trying to do a slow test or you are trying to do a fast test, it depends upon that. So if I want to give some let us say delta L to a sample of L length, the deformation delta L upon L is the percentage strain which is known as axial strain and what I can do is this much of the strain I would like to give in a certain amount of time. So this becomes the rate of strain which is given to the sample. Now you must have realized that once we have encased the soil sample in a membrane, uh, whatever results you are going to get are not corresponding to the sample, alright because there is a membrane effect which is going to get implicated on the sample. So there are few corrections which are to be done. I am not going to go into the details of these corrections. Normally when you perform this test in the laboratory, you should be applying this correction. So first one is the rubber membrane correction. All right how much confinement the rubber membrane is going to exert on the sample because that gets added to the strength parameters of the sample. Now what is going to happen typically is if I do a this type of a relationship <coughs> with the rubber membrane what you are going to get is always the higher results as compared to the original sample. So this is the let us say soil sample and this would be the rubber membrane plus sample. So we apply two types of correction over here, one is the shear strength which is getting added up and 
the strains which are going to be eliminated from the composite sample. So, rubber membrane plus sample might be giving you more axial strains as compared to sample when it is going to fail. So, this part you have to apply. So, we apply two corrections one is for the, the shear strength and the second one is for the axial strains. You can create a dummy sample of wax and you can coat this sample with the rubber membrane and then you can perform this test you can get the values. And this is the most important correction which is done and once this is done you can go ahead with the testing procedure. So, this part is also important and if you remember I had given you a relationship which is uh, suggested by Bishop and Henkel. This was in 1957 where the failure time this is the same time as this I am defining here is related to pi L square upon C V. Now, this is where the entry cases can be included much more into this triaxial testing. This is a simple case of two side drainage all right in one dimensional consolidation we have talked about the two side drainage all right. So, as if clay is sandwiched between sands. And hence, if I am trying to simulate this condition which occurs in the nature, there is a clay seam sitting in between the sand deposits. These are the two drainage conditions which I have included. There could be a situation where you have drainage from one side only that can also be done. I can remove this porous stone at the top and I can only have this. Sometimes if you remember when we were talking about band drains and the PVD design, we had considered three dimensional consolidation case and this is where the radial consolidation is also required. So, this is a very clever way of doing the things. On the sample, if I want to include the effect of radial drainage, right now the drainage is in the axial direction, top and bottom and this happens to the center line, alright. What I will be doing is, I will be taking a piece of filter paper of the same size and slightly bigger in length as compared to the sample. And then in this filter paper, you cut out slits, all right. So, if I remove this portion, what I have done is I have created a filter paper which is with slits, is this okay. Now, this thing can be wrapped all around the sample the top portion can be folded at the bottom of the top plate and the bottom pedestal plate. And what I am doing here is by simple manipulation like this, I have induced radial drainage also. All right. This function will change accordingly. So, whenever you get time, you go through the Bishop and Henkel book on triaxial testing and complete details are given for rubber membrane correction as well as for the drainage condition correction and inducing the radial drainage corrections, alright. Ultimately, the idea is I get TF and this TF can be utilized for selecting the strain rate at which I should be doing the test and rest is all mechanical, alright. Imagine if this is a sample and if I encase it in a membrane because of the hoop stresses of the membrane what is going to happen? The sample is going to get confined clear. So, if this is not the real sample which you wanted to test. So, what we do is we take a standard sample made up of wax, you can cast a sample, you can encase the sample in the rubber membrane, the one which you are going to use for this, these are standard membranes which are available. Shear the sample, you will be getting the shear strength and the axial strain clear. All right. Now, what you have to do is you have to find out the properties of the membrane itself. That portion you have to detect from the shear strength and the axial strain and you have to apply it to get the shear strength and axial strain properties of the sample.
membrane is a flexible system. So, truly speaking what is happening is the sample is not so elastic in nature, soil samples are not elastic in nature. So, by encasing in a sort of a rubber membrane or a balloon what you have done is you have induced more elasticity to it and that is the reason the strains will get elongated will be more at failure and the shear strength comes because the hoop stresses fine. All right, so all this has been done, yeah. Oh, this is to induce the radial drainage. You see, in this case, what you have done by compressing the sample, you have induced drainage only in the axial direction. But suppose if you want to simulate 3D condition, so what you are doing is by putting these drains, you are allowing water to percolate through the radial direction also. So, this becomes a 3D case. Imagine this is a slit of the filter paper all around the sample, okay. So, when you are compressing, the water is free to move from center portion to the radial direction also because of this drainage condition. No, this will be, you remember your 3 dimensional solution case. This is a 1 dimensional case. I wanted to accelerate the consolidation process. So, what did I do? I inserted a PVD or a band drain or a sand drain, clear? So, initially drainage path was H, all right. And by putting two bands or the PVDs, what I have done? I have reduced the drainage path to X by X and the drainage path would be now X by 2 and hence the consolidation process enhances becomes accelerated fine. So, the same thing you are doing. So, imagine that this becomes a curved boundary of the sample. So, this is a sample and you are inducing the drainage condition all around its surface clear. So, this becomes a radial drainage case. It is a very intelligent way of doing testing. So, now let me start discussing about these tests and their philosophies and what type of parameters they are going to give you in what circumstances? Circumstances are two, depending upon the material, what type of loading is being imparted and what type of drainage conditions are being installed, all right, or fixed. So, two things we are interested in knowing. The response of the material for a given loading and under a typical boundary conditions of drainage. So, to begin with, Let us discuss the case of a CD test. The first part or the first component C corresponds to consolidation. So, we write it as consolidated and the second part corresponds to drain, all right. As a technologist, I want to understand if I squeeze out all volumes of moisture which is present in the sample, clear how the sample will behave. So, the philosophy is like this, I want to test the sample under the worst circumstances where no fluid remains in it. Clear? Traxial testing is mostly philosophical. So, you want to understand what is the resilience of the material to the situation when all amount of volumetric moisture has been removed from it. Two ways are there to do it. First, you take the sample, consolidate it, clear? Try to consolidate as much as you can. Later on, shear it under drain conditions. What is the meaning of this? As long as I am doing consolidation, my valves are closed, oh sorry, they are open. So, the way we do this is, you start with the sample, triaxial sample, initial condition is all round pressure is sigma 3, hydrostatic condition, shear stress is 0, because you are not shearing the sample, both sides drainage is occurring. Consolidation process, what about the pore pressure? 
So, you have squeezed out all the water under confining stresses just by application of sigma 3. So, what type of response I am going to get from this? I can get what what will be getting? Consolidation is a function of time. So, what I am going to get is with the time how much volume of the water is going to come out of the sample which I can measure by connecting a burette you remember. So, if this burette is connected and I am consolidating the sample under a sigma 3 I know what is the delta V of water which is coming out. Is this part okay? So, it will be very interesting for me to see when I am consolidating the sample under a triaxial condition, initially the volume will increase as a function of time and ultimately what will happen? This will become constant. Now, remember this consolidation characteristic is a function of sigma 3. So, the moment you enhance sigma 3 value, what is going to happen? There will be a change in the curve, alright. So, I can say that as sigma 3 increases, this curve will keep on shifting down. Now, that depends upon the sigma 3 which you are applying on the sample. Is this part clear? The thing important to remember here is when you are doing a triaxial test and consolidation, you are going to get the best possible CV value. Why? Because this CV is under three dimensional condition, all round pressure sigma 3 clear, even from top and bottom also, which you could not get from one dimensional consolidation test. So, this is the best way to get CV value. You know the time where this attains the constant volume condition. Now, this time I can include in that equation. So, I have T f equal to pi L square upon C v, L is known for the drainage condition, I can obtain C v value. So, this is the best way to obtain C v value, coefficient of consolidation, fine. Remember the soils for which the sample can be made, not the very sensitive and uh, soft clays, for that then we have to do when shear test. Is this part okay? So, important thing here to remember is during consolidation stage there cannot be pore water pressure. I normally define this as U C. Today I am introducing the concept of pore water pressure though we studied in one dimensional consolidation if you remember and there we use this term as delta U. Now, this delta U which is getting generated because of application of delta sigma all right, what is delta sigma? The external stress changes will have two components. One is U C, another one is U D and D corresponds to drain. So, that means from this point onwards, if I shear this sample extremely slowly, What type of loading condition is this? Extremely slow loading, strains, drained or undrained, understand. Very slow shearing rate, what slow shearing rate connotes to? Pore pressure develops, gets dissipated. When you are making an embankment, remember embankments are made layer by layer, clear. So, the first layer you put on the soil mass, some pore pressure generates. If the material happens to be freely draining, what is going to happen? By the time the second layer comes, this pore pressure gets dissipated and sequentially you are making an embankment. Long term performance, extreme possibilities, clear, where you are just going to collapse. Remember, you have sweated out and I am not allowing you to drink any water and still I am asking you to run, what is going to happen? You will collapse. So, this is the ultimate strength a material can exhibit, fine. 
Now, as a geotechnical engineer, I am more interested in upper bounds and lower bounds because I can't say that this is what the strength of the material would be. So, by doing a CD test, I have got an upper bound on the properties of the material. Those of you who will be doing courses on limit equilibrium, plasticity theory and all, you must have come across this term upper bound and lower bound.